Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron here today. Going to do something a little different, have a little marker board out. We're going to go over the Great Commission Scriptures from Jesus Christ and get kind of a feel and an understanding for what we're supposed to be preaching today. Now, a lot of people, they go into, well, Paul and Peter preached two different Gospels. They did not. That is merely a misunderstanding of Paul getting the Gospel to the Gentiles. Uh, Peter getting the gospel to the Jews. They both preach the identical gospel, and this is seen all throughout the epistles. So let's go to the first Great Commission scripture, the most famous, most popular one. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So go. There's some go in our gospel. You know, the first two letters is gospel. We're supposed to go. So, God's spell in the Old English. Go into all the world. Teach all nations. Now, notice this isn't just to the Jews. This is to everybody. All nations. And then we're supposed to baptize. And we're supposed to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost. If you had an original 1611 KJV, you'd see name is capitalized there. And uh, so it lets you know there's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, the Great Commission Scriptures, as we turn to Mark 16, these are given by Jesus after His resurrection, but before His ascension. So, He's gone. He's carried captivity captive. He's come back. And uh, he's sharing with his disciples in these post-resurrection appearances. The Bible actually says in Luke, he opens their understanding. So Peter didn't get it wrong. The apostles didn't get it wrong. There is a gospel out there. So this is part, this is part of the Great Commission. We're supposed to do this. What does it say in Mark chapter 16? Now you're going to have to catch this. He said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So go into all the world. We got that again. And preach the gospel to every creature. We know the gospel, according to 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we're supposed to preach it to everybody. Kind of sounds like all nations, doesn't it? Now, we're not like... Thomas, uh, excuse me, we're not like St. Francis of Assisi. He used to baptize animals. He misunderstood that when it said every creature, he baptized animals as well. St. Francis did uh, sincerely wrong. So, every creature. Now, let's see what else it says in Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. So, now, this is where people miss it here in the Deep South. They say, whosoever believeth and is saved shall be baptized. Not scriptural. Whosoever believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Baptism was considered essential to salvation. It is not a work. It is not. You're standing there. Somebody's dumping you under the water in Jesus' name. And so it is not a work. Baptism was considered essential in all writings that we have extant in the early Christian era till the 5th century A.D. And it's still like the Roman Catholic Church, the Lutherans, um, Greek Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, all of these would all say, yes, baptism is absolutely essential. So he that uh, believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned, obviously because they wouldn't get baptized. So guess what? We got baptism. And that equals salvation. That's right. Now, I'm not talking about baptismal regeneration. Don't read things. Don't get all hot under the collar. I don't believe that. But I do believe people have faith in Jesus Christ. They repent of their sins. Then they're baptized in the likeness of His death in His name. And God raises them to walk in the newness of life with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we walk the straight and narrow way. There's only one entrance way into uh, heaven, and that is through Jesus Christ. And it is by His grace, His mercy, that He has provided a way. It is not by works, lest any man should boast. So, we've got Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Mark 16. Now we've got yet another great commission passage in Luke, Dr. Luke 
chapter 24, Dr. Luke, some of you I feel like are going to get really mad with me on this. I want you to pray about it and study to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. All right, so um, Luke chapter 24, and it says, verse 44, And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which are written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, the disciples, that they might understand the scriptures. So you have the Apocrypha is not mentioned there. That's why we have a closed canon of 66 books. And then he opens their uh, uh, eyes and he said unto them, Thus it is written, Thus it behoove Christ to suffer and arise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So now we have repentance as part of the Great Commission. Repentance, also remission of sins. And this remission of sins is going to be accomplished in His name. Okay, and it's going to start, where is this all going to start? Jerusalem. So wherever the gospel is going to start, the apostles preaching it. Because remember, Jesus said in John 17, I pray not for these only, but for all them that will believe on me, Jesus, through their word. So the apostles are going to have the gospel. Peter had the keys. So according to Matthew 16, we should expect Peter's going to be the one preaching this. Okay? This is all in there. And so... Uh, Verse 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. So you've still got them. You stay in Jerusalem till you get power. Power is coming in Jerusalem. So remission of sins, repentance, all this is going to be in Jerusalem. There's going to be a city where all this happens. Now I love verse 52, And they worshipped Him, talking about Jesus, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. So they worshiped Jesus. Guess what? These were one God Jews. They were worshiping Jehovah in flesh. Hallelujah. Now we come to John. A lot of people miss the Great Commission in John, or they have a vast misunderstanding of the Great Commission in John. Now just pray about it. Think it through. This is Scripture. This, isn't, this is all Bible, and this is rightly dividing the word of truth. And we're going to try to answer some questions about this a little bit later. John chapter 20. And you can put questions in the comments. I'll try to get to those as well. John chapter 20, verses 22 and 23. Well, we'll start at verse 21 so you can get the context. Then said Jesus to them, again, peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. I'm sending you like the Father sent me. Notice the apostles were not pre-existent being sent. That has nothing to do with second person of the Trinity. That has everything to do with being commissioned by God. So the humanity, the sonship of Jesus is here saying, as the Father sent me, so now I'm sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now what did we just read in Luke 24? You stay in Jerusalem till you get the power from on high. So according to John 20, you got to get the Holy Ghost. Just like Luke 24, it all goes together. All right? And whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. Whosoever sins ye retain, they're retained. Uh-oh, remission of sins. And notice this, they would have power to remit sins. So we're going to see what that's talking about. How do they have power to remit sins? And Because uh, obviously it's in the name of Jesus. None of us can do anything except do follow what Jesus said properly, and then God does it by His grace and mercy. Now let's go to Acts chapter 1, the fifth Great Commission Scripture. All right, we'll start at verse number 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So they had no clue. 
And, and I love verse 7. This is a friend of mine. It's his favorite verse of Scripture uh, on prophecy. Just on prophecy. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own hand, but in his own power. So it's not for us. They were like, Are you going to do this now? He's like, It's not for you to know if I'm going to do it now. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Uh-oh. Holy Ghost power. So it, it's a direct line. Power from Luke 24, Holy Ghost, uh, John chapter 20, Holy Ghost power. Same thing. And remember Jesus back here in verse 20, Matthew 28, He said, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. How? In the power of the Holy Ghost. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Now let's keep reading here. And you're going to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. So this is still coming both in Jerusalem. It's coming in Jerusalem. And uh, so uh, verse 4, and being, this is Acts 1, assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard of me. So the promise of the Father, that's the exact same language as Luke 24. Promise of the Father. Promise of the Father. So they're in Jerusalem when you get to Acts chapter 2. There's about 120 gathered there, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, is there. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Oh, every nation. All nations, power. They've gotten the Holy Ghost here. And so then, verse 14, But Peter, remember, he's the guy with the keys. He's the one we should expect saying this. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, Matthew and Peter did not have a disagreement. Matthew and John, Matthew and James, Peter and John, Peter and James, Peter and Bartholomew, Nathaniel, none of them lifted up his voice and began to preach. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, verse 37, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent. So, repent. And be baptized. Baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. Name. Remission of sins, and he had just preached the death, burial, and resurrection to all nations, every creature under heaven. The gospel, he had just preached the gospel to them. And you shall receive the Holy Ghost. And this promise, the promise of the Father, remember promise, promise of the Father, is unto you and to your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. You, your children, but all the Gentiles, Jew and Gentile alike. Now you can go to Romans 6 and see verses 2 through 4 that this gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection, repentance, water baptism in Jesus' name, reception of the Holy Ghost, was preached to Gentiles. You can go to 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 1 and compare it with Acts 18, 13. Follow me in your Bible if you want to and see it was done to Gentiles as well as Jews. You can go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11, where it talks about, and such were some of you, but you've been washed, you've been sanctified, you've been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. You can go to Titus 3, 5, the washing of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost. You can go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 and 2. That they were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud spirit and in the sea. You can go all throughout the book of Acts, Acts 2, Acts 8, Acts 9, Acts 10, Acts 16, Acts 19, Acts 22, 16. And the epistles are written to people who were saved during the book of Acts time period. The book of Acts is not a transitional book. There's not hyper dispensationalism. This is the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. 
All right, Jude even mentions that. He likens it to the typology of Israel. You can go to Galatians chapter 3, verse number 27. You can go to uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. You can just go through all the scriptures. You know, so great a salvation, book of Hebrews, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. The like manner, even baptism doth now save us. There, it, Look, this is how people were saved in the early church. An honest look says that. And there was no ending to the book of Acts. This is how we're supposed to be saved. Now, if it does not comport with your experience, we need to conform our experience to the Word of God. It didn't comport with my experience for years. People would preach this gospel to me. I would yell at them. I would scream at them. I would holler at them. I'd be in the middle of the road yelling at them. And then I got it. And I'm praying you get it too. It is the faith once delivered unto the saints. I know there's hundreds and thousands and maybe millions of Apollos out there. People of like the 12 disciples at, uh, of John the Baptist. And I know that people, many of my internet friends are not going to like me after preaching this. But am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I'm going to tell you, this is the Scripture. This is the Word of God. And many people, James D.G. Dunn, others, they're seeing this, F.F. Uh, F. Bruce, as they just study the Bible with unbiased glasses, they see it. I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. You see it too. Why don't you pray with me right now? God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm asking everybody that watches this video to get the Holy Ghost, to receive your beautiful spirit, your love in their life, to be obedient, Lord Jesus Christ, to the gospel. And God, to repent, get baptized in your name, because you're the only one that can save us, Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have any right to change it for denominationalism. It's not about organization. It's about the scriptures and the word. I love you, God. God, thank you. Bring them all in. And let them bring them all in. And God, let us see a great revival spread all around the world. It's all about you, Jesus. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. I love you. Feel free to write comments. As long as they're respectful, I'll be respectful back to you. I'll try to answer them in full. And uh, you can even get our... our uh, phone numbers, our uh, church uh, website address. We'll be happy to send you all the literature that you could ever want. So God bless you. I love you. Let's live for Jesus Christ. He loves you. He wants a great church in Jesus' name.